In this video we're going over some of the basics including drivers and some software to get our ox metal moving. So if you've been following the build you would have known by this time that for my driver board I chose the CNC X-Pro V2. However, the CNC X-Pro V2 along like a lot of other driver boards uses garble firmware. So although this video I'll be using the CNC X-Pro, this will apply to a lot of boards that are also running the garble firmware. So without further ado, let's take a look at the software we need. So our first job is to open up our web browser and we're going to go to a couple websites and download some software. So the first one I'm going to visit, all the links will be in the video's description by the way, is ftdichip.com and depending on your operating system you're going to want to download the appropriate driver. So I'm running Windows 64-bit so I'm going to click on this here and then we're going to want to choose to save the file and hit OK. I'm not going to do that because I've already downloaded it. Next we're going to go to GitHub and we're going to download Universal G-Code Sender. So we're going to scroll down and you're going to come across this Stable Builds volume and you're going to want to select the latest Stable Build. So in my case right now it's 1.0.9. We're going to click on that and then we're going to get a download box with the option Save File, hit OK. Now, um, Universal G-Code Sender does use Java software to run so if you don't have Java installed you'll have to navigate to java.com and download the free Java application which will install on your computer and then you'll be able to run Universal G-Code Sender. So here we have the two zip files that we've downloaded from uh, GitHub, Universal G-Code Sender and FTDI chip uh, we've got the drivers here so I've extracted those so I can delete those now and we're left with these two folders so now we can go ahead and plug in our CNC X Pro board oh, did you hear that we got the dreaded drivers not installed sound so we're going to go to control panel we're going to go to device manager and close control panel now you can see here it's already opened up under other devices a USB device with a yellow exclamation mark next to it. We're going to select, right click on the USB device, select update driver software. We're going to select browse my computer for driver software. We're going to click on browse. We're going to navigate to the desktop and then the folder that we extracted with the drivers in it. Hit OK. Hit next and there we are, drivers successfully installed. So we can close all that now and now we can take a look at Universal G-Code Sender. So we're going to click on Universal G-Code Sender here. So this is Universal G-Code Sender. So provided uh, Universal G-Code Sender has detected your board, it will automatically select the right COM port, so in my case it's 6. Make sure the baud rate is set to 115200, select that from the drop down, and we're going to hit open connection. So our, we have successfully connected to our board and we can tell that by getting this little bit of text back from our CNCX Pro board. Now we've got an alarm state here. Um, when you're first setting up your CNCX Pro, you shouldn't actually get this. And even if you did, you shouldn't be worried about it. Not, not yet at least. So if we want to change settings on our board, we use this command prompt here. And we're going to send dollar sign dollar sign. And we're going to hit enter to send that code. And this might look scary at first. This is all the settings for our CNCX Pro. Now it might look like a bit of rubbish at the, at the beginning, but um, after a little bit of reading and probably after this video tutorial, you'll be pretty wise on how to adjust everything here. Um, a lot of the stuff we actually don't need to play around with. Um, most of it we can leave alone. 
stuff we may have to change is, for instance, these three values here. This is our steps per millimeter value for the x, y, and z axis. And basically, if we've got a dollar sign and then digits after it, that is the code itself. After we got an equal sign and then generally numbers to follow after that. That is the value. So for instance, dollar sign 100 is the steps per millimeter value for the x axis. And then after the equal sign, we've got 200. So that's 200 steps per millimeter. Same goes for the x, y, z feed rate, uh, acceleration, max travel, and so on. We've got a few other settings here. We've got soft limits, hard limits, home cycling. And a lot of this, as I mentioned, we don't have to change. This is how, at least for the moment, I've got my uh, driver board all set up. So you can pretty much copy this if you want. But if you would like to know more about what all these settings do, there will be a link down in the video's description to go to this uh, page on GitHub. And if we scroll down, we can see View Garble Settings, and we can see all the settings which our CNCX Pro board just spat out on the Universal G-Code Sender. So let's say we want to know more about $21 twenty-one code, which is hard limits. I'm going to scroll down to that setting. And then we've got the setting here and then basically what it does. Now, let's say, for instance, we wanted to enable hard limits. Or maybe we just want to know if it's even on. Well, in this case, we've got equal sign zero. That means it's not enabled. It is currently disabled. If we wanted to change that, we would have to change that zero to a one. And we can do that by sending dollar sign 21, which is the code we're trying to adjust, equals sign 1. Press enter. We get a message returning that it's been received, and we get OK. And now I'll send the double dollar sign command again. And we can see now that the 0 has now turned into a 1. So that setting has been successfully changed. I actually don't want to keep that setting, so I'm going to change it back. And we can see it's now back to a zero. So when it comes to adjusting things like your steps per millimetre value, we're only going to briefly touch on it this video because it's a fairly big subject. But essentially, if you want to calculate your steps per millimetre value, if you've got stepper motors which have um, one step equals 1.8 degrees and you're using eighth micro stepping, then you can just use this value 200 um, steps per millimetre. If not, we're going to have to break out the calculator. So how do we determine our steps per millimetre value? Well, first off, we need to know the degrees or how many steps our stepper motor has. Now you're going to have to find that out yourself with the specification sheet, whatever you get with your drive, uh, with your stepper motors. I know that mine have a fairly standard 1.8 degree per step of motion. So what we're going to do is obviously we're going to take a full revolution, which is 360 degrees. We're going to divide that by 1.8 degrees. And that means that our motor has to do 200 steps for a full revolution. However, it just gets a little bit more complicated than that. So we have eighth micro stepping on. Now that means that every single step is timesed by eight. So we're going to times it by eight. For instance, if we had 16th micro stepping on, we would times 200 by 16. So we're going to hit equals. So now we've got a value of 1600 steps per revolution. And since we're using Acme lead screw, which per revolution has 8 millimeters of travel, we can divide this number by 8. And we, funny enough, end up back at 200 steps per millimeter of travel. And I realise at that point that that might have sounded like a bunch of rubbish, but if it is confusing, there's plenty of information online 
uh, of how to get to the, your steps per millimetre value. As far as our max feed rate for our X, Y and Z, I've left them at a fairly standard 1500 um, millimetres per minute, it's fairly slow, and 1000 millimetres per minute on the Z axis, I'm probably going to tweak these later. Um, other stuff I've enabled is home cycling, and I have changed home uh, direction invert, and that is dollar sign twenty three equals three. Um, so basically, now we can look at the machine controls. So we've got a fair bit of stuff to go over here. We've got first off reset zero, return to zero, soft reset. We've got a bunch of crazy looking buttons here. We've also got our um, controls to move our machine in the positive or negative direction of any of the axes. We've also got step size 200, so if we wanted to move, um, oh sorry 20, so if we want to move 10 millimeters, I need to 10 and then would select any of these buttons to move the axis in that direction. So back to this active state alarm, you should get this after you've enabled home cycling. So basically in this state the machine won't move any axis until it has either been unlocked or homed. To home it we can send dollar sign H or just push this button or to unlock it we can press dollar sign X or send it in the command with text. So I'm going to for the moment just unlock the machine so it gives us a caution unlocked OK. Um, and we can turn on our power supply and then move the axis in any of these directions. So I'll do that now. So let's move the X axis in a negative direction, 10 millimeters of movement. And you can see we get an active state run and then back to idle. And I can pretty much do that in any axis I like. So let's move over to the camera so you can see what the machine's doing now. So now we're looking at the machine. So now I'm going to send the dollar sign H command, which is going to home it. So what the machine's doing here is it's using a fast seek rate to find the maximum travel on the limit switch until it hits the switch. Then it's going to bounce off the switch, and then it's going to um, slowly creep back up to the switch for a second time to get a precise measurement. Oh. So that corner that the router is positioned in should be the home position. If it's not, then you've either got your stepper motor wired in the wrong direction which you can resolve by either uh, what flipping the connections on the CNC X Pro board or physically changing the settings in the software. Um, another option you have is to also look at the homing direction which is a setting and I'm not going to go over that because there's more information than I could tell you on that GitHub page about all the commands. So basically at this point um, the machine is homed and I'm just going to push back the y-axis so you can see my childish scribble on the board underneath. So you see on that board I've got x and y direction with arrows and a positive and minus. Now if we go back to our software we can see that we have x positive x minus y z all that so z plus would be uh, raising the bit z minus would obviously be down towards the table y plus should be away from home y, y negative should be towards home same with x and we'll go back to our camera so if i sent uh, a movement such as to move the x-axis 100 millimeters in the positive direction, which it is doing now, 
but let's say you had the machine configured wrong so that when you sent a command to move the x-axis in the positive direction it actually moved it in the negative direction that's where we get back to you have to change the um, the direction the stepper motor is rotating and as I mentioned we can either flip the connections on the board or change it in the software so hopefully at this point you've got your ox mill up and running smoothly without too much difficulties so now really our next step is we can mill something out and to do that we need a g-code file which we can send using Universal G-Code Sender to tell the machine where to go and where to cut. Now the G-Code is created by using CAM software. Now CAM software comes in a variety of flavours including paid and free and we'll be going over CAM software in another video and how to generate G-Code and then send that to the machine to cut out our objects for us. So if you want to see that there'll be a link up here once that video goes live and if you found this video helpful it would be tremendous if you give it a like and also if you loved this video do hit that subscribe button I'm sure there will be plenty more videos you'll enjoy to come other than that thank you very much for watching I'll see you in the next one bye for now